Hi, everybody. Mike Linskog here. Welcome to another edition of Quakes Talk here. Uh, we've had a chance to visit with a couple of former managers for the Quakes. How about a dive into a future Dodger? We're talking about Dodgers prospect and former 2019 Quake, Jacob Amaya. Jacob, thank you so much for uh, making some time again to, uh, to join us here on Quakes Talk. How are you? Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I'm good. How are you? Real good. Thank you. Real good. Just uh, adjusting to quarantine. I got a little guy who's just recently started school. Uh, you're fortunate nice. enough not to, not to have to deal with that. How's quarantine treating you, man? Pretty, uh, pretty tough going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Just um, working out right now. Just, just minding my own business. Um, just staying in the house, going to do things that I need to do um, if I need to do them, which is rare. So, um, yeah, just normally just in my house working out. I, I can't imagine uh, being a player right now in, in the minor leagues and, and having your season totally disrupted. Uh, guys that are, uh, you know, baseball players, it's all about routine. It's all about rhythm. And, and your rhythm and your routine has, has completely been disrupted. You, you don't have a season. You don't have necessarily adequate workout facilities uh, to stay sharp. What is, what is a minor league player like yourself? Uh, how, how do you keep focused and, and stay sharp uh, during the month of August? Um, I guess pretty much just trying to do things that fit you. Um, you know, you talked about routine and that's a huge thing. You know, if I knew that, uh, going into pro ball, um, my body would be, I mean, it's, uh, it's not in bad shape, but it would be better than what it is now. Um, not having a routine is, makes me thrown off a little bit because if I don't do something that I did the day before and I did good that day. Then, and, and if I don't do my routine, then I just feel off, way off. So routine is huge for everybody, I guess. I could talk on, I could talk for a lot of baseball players out there. So, uh, yeah. I'm not sure what you're doing for a, for a workout facility, a home gym per se, but uh, you know, during the minor league season, obviously staying in shape is, is such a big part of it, going to the ballpark and, and getting your work done, whether it's in the batting cage or on the field. Uh, that's just, that's what you do. And, and to have that disrupted, like, like, where are you going to, you know, work out? Where are you going to get hacks in the cage? Uh, is that even an option for you at this stage? Of the yeah. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, when COVID came about, um, I was working at home, working out at home, um, had nowhere to hit. So I moved out here to Rancho with my brother and his girlfriend. And uh, the Dodgers actually mentioned a spot um, here in Rancho. So I get my workouts there and, and I hit there too. Very limited Fantastic. people. That's uh, definitely a, a better situation than I'm sure a lot of oh, guys yeah. uh, have the opportunity to take advantage of. So it's cool that you're yep. let's let's talk about being a local guy. You know, it's it's not often that we get to say, oh yeah, a former Quake, a future Quake, right here in Southern California. You actually happen to be right here in Rancho Cucamonga. You were uh, born and raised in the in the Covina area. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but you know, somewhere down there near uh, the APU campus, which of course they're a big partner of ours. Uh, you had an opportunity to uh, to grow up here in Southern California, uh, not only rooting for the Dodgers, but your family's got some amazing Dodger ties that I'll let you touch on. Uh, it's, it was so neat for our fans, our staff, uh, and, and for the guys uh, to be able to welcome a local player last year. You spent the month of August with the Quakes um, and, and, of course, had some really memorable moments, one of which in the playoffs that we'll address here in a moment. Uh, but as a, as a local kid that's, that's coming to Rancho that, at least knew of the Quakes growing up, maybe not necessarily coming out, you know, uh, every season to visit, but you, you knew who the Quakes were. And of course, their deep ties with the Dodgers over the last 10 years. Tell us how special it was to be able to play in front of so many family and friends last year in, in Rancho Cucamonga and represent the Dodgers at the same time. Uh, definitely special. Um, knowing how much support that I have coming back home um, to the people who support me. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, it feels good to come back and uh, do what I love to do in front of those people. Um, they've been there, you know, since the start. So I mean, the least I can do is just come back and try and put on a show, which I try to do for everyone. So um, yeah, it feels good. Um, couldn't have asked for a better better turnout for me. So um, yeah, I guess that's just the bigger the bigger uh, thing to this is just having so much support behind me. Yeah, through, through no fault of their own, I'm sure not a lot of them had the opportunity to, to go to Great Lakes, Midland, Michigan, to watch you as a loon, uh, to, to go from playing for the loons on a, on a Tuesday to playing for the Quakes <laughs> on a Wednesday or Thursday with so much uh, fan support behind you. Yep. It, got, it got a little rowdy out there with the Jacob it Amaya did. fan club. It was awesome. It did. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be the first, it, that was the first time ever being nervous. I remember uh, 
I remember a, a fly ball was hit to me at second. And um, I think I moved like to my right a little bit and the ball was like way to my left. And then I went up and I went left and the ball, like I caught it behind me. I was, I was tripping out. <laughs> 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 well, it's uh, it's got to be an amazing feeling to have that kind of support behind you, though, because uh, the signs were there, the people was there, the energy and the noise was there. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and so many of them were specifically there to see you. Uh, no and, doubt. And obviously, we we as the Quakes uh, gained a lot of that uh, benefit with the support for the the entire team, and it was just it was an awesome environment. So props to your family and friends for for coming out representing and and getting yep. behind Jacob and Maya. So. Very Thanks, cool. Savannah, for sure. I want to talk about your Dodger ties. You grew up a Dodger fan, and it's not just because you lived here in Southern California. Your family has some really neat roots uh, tied to the Dodgers organization as well. I'll let you touch on that. Yeah, my my grandpa played with the Dodgers uh, in 55 to 58. So, um, I mean, how all this went down, you know, couldn't have asked for a better turnout again. So, um, yeah, just trying to keep that, that bloodline going. Um, got some shoes to fill. You know, so just trying to do that and uh, just trying to push with, with everything I got. Your family must be coming from obviously. him. Yeah, very proud, very proud. Um, Starting with him. Obviously, with you guys uh, representing the Dodgers here and, and you being a Dodger fan and what have you, um, you know, you had committed prior to being drafted to go to Cal State Fullerton, which is, is a phenomenal baseball program, uh, one of the elites uh, at, at the college level, in my opinion, and, and certainly. Um, it, it had to have been uh, at some point a, a difficult decision or, or was it at all? I mean, a storied program with Cal State Fullerton and a college lifestyle ahead or go to the franchise that you've grown up with and, and rooted for. How tough was a decision uh, to commit to the Dodgers rather than go to college? Um, it really wasn't a tough decision. Um, baseball is something that I've wanted to do all my life. Um, that was kind of, that was kind of built in me when I was young. So um, I knew, I'll be, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you that I'm not a school guy, so didn't really like school. I just wanted to play ball every day. So it um, wasn't really a tough decision. It was a pretty, pretty quick one, I would say. So, um, yeah, I would, I would definitely rather hit and catch balls than right on paper. So, Right on. <laughs> I hear that, man. I hear that. Some of us aren't, aren't lucky enough to be able to make that decision. So I'm right. glad that's worked out for you, and, uh, and I know you're going to be successful long term. Let's talk about last year uh, a little bit as a Quake. There's, there's one memorable game that, uh, that I know that uh, everybody that was there certainly uh, has, a, has a fond memory of. Uh, it was in the playoffs. It was game three. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in a best of five series, the Quakes were down 2-0, coming home to Rancho Cucamonga and Lone Mark Field uh, to a fantastic crowd. Uh, Quakes were down a run uh, in the bottom of the ninth inning, and pinch hitter Starling Heredia – uh, came up there and within the blink of an eye, first pitch swinging as a pinch hitter, destroyed a ball down the left field line with you in the on deck circle. You are now heading to the plate in a tie game. Uh, talk about that moment for Starling Heredia. We had the opportunity to visit with Mark Curtanian here a couple of weeks back. And <laughs> that's one of his more uh, fond memories as a manager, for sure. He said, you know, not only was the house going insane, but the dugout and the energy uh, around the guys was was just incredible. As the no. on-deck hitter, seeing no. Starling do what he did and tie that game as a pinch hitter. Talk about uh, that moment. Uh, I mean, I'll keep saying it forever, and I think we'll all keep saying it, that ball still hasn't landed. Whoever <laughs> was there and saw that ball. Um, no, but yeah, seeing him, seeing him uh, jump up from the bench and uh, come into the game, no swings, no nothing, no stretching. Um, he came in and that, that look on his face said it all for the whole game. I promise you that. Um, that guy came in and just did what he had to do. Um, every situation that I've been in, that one, like someone who's done some good before me, I've never, I've never succeeded because I've always wanted to do more. So I've always, I've always failed. So um, I just wanted to go and do, do some simple get on base. You know, he tied the ball game up and then uh, he, he, uh, Threw a curveball, I think, way in front of the plate. And I knew he was throwing me a fastball next pitch because they were breaking me off all game. So, um, yeah, I, that freaking outcome was crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, for the, the fans that weren't there that are waiting for the, uh, the climax here. So after Starling Heredia hits the pinch hit home run, just two pitches later, Heredia, uh, first pitch breaking ball in the dirt. He came back with old dead red. Uh, and, and you sent it out nearly as deep as, as Starling hit it down the left field line. You went to left center, 
it was a clear walk off coming off your bat. I mean, there was no if, ands, or buts about it. Uh, and, and as you just suggested, and I know we've spoken in a previous interview, uh, you didn't feel like you had necessarily risen to the occasion in those truly clutch moments. This one was a walk off home run. Uh, there's no, there's no better moment and no better finish than that, my friend. No better moment. Definitely can be no better moment in front of family, two home runs in that game. I mean, couldn't have asked for, for anything better, honestly, to be, uh, be real with you. Blackout moment for sure. Really don't know what happened <laughs> after I hit second base. So, I mean, can't really tell you too much, but yeah, it was crazy player. Um, sad it turned out the way it did, but stuff happened. So just get ready for next year, this, this year is, and next year. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got 11 seasons uh, as a member of the Quakes myself, and, and that's going to be high on the priority list as far as uh, right. the calls yeah. and the moments that I will remember uh, during my Quakes career. So thank you uh, to you and Starling for, for providing what was an unbelievable moment over the span of three pitches, no less. So uh, pretty incredible. Quakes would go on and unfortunately thank you guys. lose that series so, to, uh, yeah. to Lake Elsinore. Uh, but again, that, that moment to, uh, to win game three and stay alive was, was truly epic and, and something that, that I think we'll all remember for a long time. So let's talk about uh, your playing career on the field. Uh, 2017, uh, you're drafted out of high school in the 11th round, uh, a, a middle infielder certainly by trade. One of the things that I think makes the Dodgers such a unique franchise, I mean, you can, you can gloss them so many ways. You know, they're so deep in their minor league system. They've made so many trades for big-name players over the years, and yet – uh, as, as much as they've improved the team at the big league level, their minor league system is still so very stacked and still so very deep. And, and that's a, a tribute to, you know, their scouting and, and, and the guys that, that run their minor league show. You're a guy that's played some middle infield yep. and gotten primarily a lot of work at, at second and, and short. But I look at the, at the Dodgers versatility. Uh, you know, Justin Turner can play multiple positions. Cody, Go uh, Cody Bellinger is a gold glove member in center field. And I know he'd be a gold glover at first base if they'd give him enough reps uh, over there. He's so talented. You know, Chris yep. Taylor, Jay Hernandez are guys that can play all over the field. Right now, I think you're kind of focusing on, on the up the middle stuff. Uh, at, at some point in your career, do you think you'll be, uh, you'll be able to, uh, to, to look at a left field or a third base and go like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give that a step yeah. to improve my versatility? Um, I know I can play it, but I don't really think too much about it because I would want to be a middle, middle infielder. But if that's the way it's going to draw out, then I guess that's the way it's going to draw out. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's scary for a team to have one through nine who could play anywhere and that can ball. Then you got guys that can come off the bench and do the same thing. And we're so deep that it's going to be like that for years to come. So, I mean, to have this much talent, not only on the big league team, but in your minor league system too, is truly a blessing. So I'm um, just excited to see what's, what's going to happen. <laughs> and obviously it's a, it's a great time to, to be a Dodger. Again, they look like they're uh, potentially poised to, to go to the postseason yet again. Uh, and, and again, hopefully this will be the, uh, the year that, that brings it home for the first time since uh, Kurt Gibson and Oral Hershiser in, in 1988. So you weren't even yeah. born. You weren't even born. I wasn't. Then. I wasn't. Oh, you, no uh, way. Well, 1998. Well, Hopefully the, uh, the Dodgers will give you something to remember now uh, within your lifetime as well, and this will be the year. So Jacob Amaya oh, yeah. has, has been our guest. Um, you know, this, this lost year, this lost minor league season, this hurts. You know, as a member of the front office, you know, going into work and seeing the fans and seeing the players and the coaches and the, the relationships that you strike up, uh, you know, each year is, is really what keeps me coming back to the ballpark. Uh, I, I can't imagine as a guy who, you know, as, as yourself, you know, self-described, you know, you're a baseball guy, you know, baseball and, and, and now it's yeah. taken away from you. My, my heart breaks for you and the rest of the Dodger minor leaguers and, and minor leaguers, in fact, all over the nation uh, to have a season stolen from them uh, by the COVID-19 virus. Um, it's unfortunate, but give you a chance here to, to just say hello to the fans and some of your family and friends that, uh, that, that may be missing on Jacob Amaya and the rest of the Quakes. <laughs> Well, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Just an opportunity to uh, to say thanks to the fans and 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 hopefully whether or not it's it's Rancho or Tulsa or OKC next year for you in 2021. Uh, you know, my heart breaks for all you minor leaguers that have a lost season here. Let's give you an opportunity to just say yeah. hi and, and thanks to to your family, friends, and and all the fans that are missing on the Quakes. Yeah, of course. I mean, without you guys, freaking, um. I, I can't get into ball games without the fans. So, I mean, fans are everything. Um, everything comes from the fans. You know, we appreciate you guys more than you know. So, 
keep coming to games. Hopefully you guys could come soon. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. Jacob Amaya has been our guest. Jacob, our thanks to you for, for running it back here a couple of times on this interview here as part of Quake's Talk. And uh, obviously, stay safe. Best to you and your family. Uh, and gosh, I can't wait for the day to, to see out there on the diamond, whether it's at Lone Mark Field or if I'm getting footage from Tulsa or OKC or even at the big league level. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing Jacob Amaya out there on the field real soon. Yep, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Stay safe, too. Take care. And for the fans out there, we look forward to seeing you soon. I'm Mike Linscott. Oh, Have yes. a great one.